Hi, so today we're going to be doing some monoprinting. Monoprinting is a form of printmaking and what that means is mono means one so you can only make one image from that print, it's totally unique and you can use lots of different media for this but today I thought we'd try and use biro pen. So this is what you need to find. These are basic um, ballpoint pens from the supermarket. You can also use other ballpoint pens but if you're going to do that make sure you use Ask an Adult because you don't want to be using someone's best Parker pen for this because we're going to be breaking it up and they won't be happy. Okay, don't get me into trouble. All right, so we take out our pen. Get rid of the lid, won't need that. Unscrew it. Notice I'm wearing gloves. Quite a good idea if you've got some because it can get quite messy. As you know, when a pen leaks, you get ink everywhere. And take out the ink cartridge inside. And then with some scissors, I'm going to chop off each end. I'm going to use that in a minute, but before I do that, I want to draw a line. So this is my paper that I'm going to print on. Notice that I put a piece of paper underneath. You can put newspaper or some kind of covering underneath. Just make sure you do, because you don't want a mess on the table. You'll get me into trouble again. And I've written here, thanks to Dan Tyrrells on YouTube. Uh, Dan puts lots of monoprint ideas out, free to watch. He's really inspiring. So I thought I'd give him a bit of a shout out and I'll try and do that at the end of the video. Hopefully I'll remember to do that. But I've put it here for now. This is the card I'm actually going to print on. Here's my grease proof or my um, tracing paper, whatever you're using. You don't want something that's going to soak through, that's the main thing. So a bit of plastic is fine. And then I'm just going to draw basically round so I remember where my actual image is going to be. It's going to be the same size as my little plate here. Okay, so let's take that away. Where's my cartridge? Here's my cartridge. So now I'm going to, first of all, you'll need to do this quite a bit. This will take a while to get the pen flowing. Now, oh, if you have a lollipop stick or something like that, that would be quite handy. just have to be a bit patient. And I haven't got a lollipop stick, but I've got this, a plastic palette knife. I'm going to use that once I get a bit of ink on here. Right, so now I'm going to lay it down on here, but before I do that I thought I'd just have a go at making some, some random shapes. So I'm just going to tear the bit of paper I have lying around. I'm going to put this all around. Now, these bits where I'm putting paper down, they're not going to let the ink settle on the paper so those bits will be free of ink. I'll see what I mean in a minute. So turn it over now. I've got as much as I could get out of a couple of ballpoint pens that took me quite a while. You'll need to work at it but just keep going. Then I'm just going to lay this on top lining it up. Now if I just 
actually do that. Now it's only going to be this bit here. So I'm going to rub with my finger. Let's just lift it up and see what it's doing. Okay, it's quite nice. Let's put that back and move it around. Actually, I might just ignore the fact that I've made this around the edge because I think that's going to because I haven't been able to fill the whole plate, and I don't think you will either. So we're going to ignore that now. Take that off. So we've got some quite nice things going on. Now, if I wanted to, I could line it up or line it up where I want my image to go. So I'm going to draw something and with that I'm going to use another pen that's not been broken up and I'm going to draw this coffee cup here. I don't know if you can see that. Put it there. Yeah. Anyway, from my angle it looks a bit different so I'm just going to draw over the top. an interesting exercise because you can't actually see what you're doing that's okay make it quite simple take it away there you go then what you could also do is if you move this around your square you can start drawing making marks so I could do some squiggles some spirals here we go I could draw kind of flower shape. I'm not really thinking too much about what I'm doing, I'm just trying to see what this will do for me. We could do something here. Quite like spirals. Look it away. Look at that. So you can see here I've got some nice textures going on but also if you draw over the top can also make drawings now you could do anything you like you could do a portrait a picture of your cat or your dog you could draw your favorite car when I mean, there's so many things that you could do but I'm just showing you all the different ways you can make marks let's have a close-up and you can see take my coffee cup away now Okay, so another idea I've had is to draw something over the top. So there's my ink face down, so the ink is facing the page. More or less line it up, it doesn't really matter. Like that. And then I've cut this out of a magazine, quite like that. I'm going to place it over the top, so it's pretty much going to get ink underneath and then I've got a propelling pencil because that's got a nice sharp point the thing is you can't press too hard with these you could use a cocktail stick or something with a sharp point to it and I'm going to draw around don't be too fiddly with it the whole point is it comes out looking a little bit wonky it doesn't have to be a perfect drawing and then I'm going to just trace over that with my, it's quite hard because it's glossy magazine. So it's hard to get a grip with the pencil. And I don't want to break the lead. So something, this is just something I've got to hand. You could use a sharp pencil, anything with a sharp point. And I'm just going over, and you could get as detailed with this as you like. I'm roughly going over. I could spend a long time going through these little patterns if I wanted to. Oh, there you go, I've broken the edge. Now you could stop halfway. Keep your finger on here lift up the paper and see what we're getting underneath. That is pretty cool.
just tracing the outline here of his head. Can you hear the rain on my roof? I hope so. Not sure how much of this will come out. Let's see, let's get a few lines here. Good thing about tracing over things like this is you get to learn about drawing as well. about the proportions. So we can see that his eyes here are like halfway down from the top of his head, which will be a bit like here. And I'm just doing it very simply. It's quite dark and it's not easy to see. I'm going and I'm conscious that I want you to see what I'm doing. There's cheeks, lines here, that chin, make sure that's in. You could even do a bit of shading here. Let's see how that's worked. Ah. So remember, now I've picked that up, that's going to be hard to place it back where I want it. So when you check, keep your, keep your finger on here. If it helps, tape it on. Get a bit of tape. When you're happy where you want to position it, then keep it there. That might be a good idea. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, he's come out quite well. And if I wanted to carry on with that, I could have done. And then if I, if the ink had run out, if I'd gone off the bit with the ink, you could have just moved that around a little bit. I'm quite happy with that. If I'd spent longer on it, I could have done more shading. One of the ways to do shading, if I just take this away, I'll turn it over onto that side, is we've done a lot of line work, haven't we, with our pencil. Whereas you could also do rubbing with your finger there I think we might have used up quite a lot of the ink that gives you quite a subtle shading or you could use an instrument so I might want to use the scissors which will obviously put more pressure on that ink and you'll get a much stronger mark. So you can you can practice how you do that. I'm just going to lower the camera a bit so you can see. There you go, have a bit of fun.